Okay. I'm not really sure how well this is going to work, but we're going to go ahead and give it a shot anyways. Recently, uh, Steam decided to release what's called the Steam Link on Quest. Up until now, I've basically just done full body tracking with my index. I think for like the last two years now. Um, never really wanted to try face... Well, wanted to try face tracking, but... Mm, it just seemed like a lot of work, something I wasn't really trying to get into. Uh, Steam Link changed that. So as you can see, I, um, I have face tracking now. Got myself a little Quest Pro. Uh, you know, it was 10% off the already reduced price. Um, still getting used to it though, as you can see, I keep looking around elsewhere. Uh, without realizing that. Oh yeah, it's actually tracking where I'm looking. Uh, turns out, not that difficult to do. It's not as seamless as I thought though. Like, from what I uh, saw on the internet, it was basically just, you know, activate the OSC settings in Steam Link, turn on face tracking, turn on eye tracking, and you're good to go. Not true. Not true at all. <laughs> so... Uh, you still need the face tracking app on your computer, so the VRC face tracking thing. Uh, you just load the Steam Link module for Quest Pro, and that's what works. That took me a good four hours to figure out. Four hours. Ugh. So, um... That's the big number one hurdle. Number two hurdle is you still need, um, what is it, the space calibration app to link together your lighthouse tracking stuff with your Quest Pro. So right now, I have a Quest Pro on, no tracker on the Quest Pro, it's just the headset. I have my index controllers, and then I have my Vive trackers. So hip and two feet. So, and it actually works really well. Um, I have a small area. I don't really move around a whole lot. I still, you know, dance around every now and then. But for the most part, um, it actually stays pretty well calibrated. I Every now and then I'll get a little drift and I'll have to calibrate again. So I don't get the, uh, the fancy space, the con continuous calibration that you would if you stuck a tracker on your headset but i'm not about that life i like to sit on my chair that sits high enough where i would contact um the back of the chair with the tracker and mm -mm. uh hard pass on that one so uh, i'm sticking with this and so far so good so if that is something you are considering it's it's actually pretty easy once you get past the hurdle of figuring out what the hell you need to do. Uh, you know what, and I'll probably even just throw in a couple links uh, in this video just to direct you to the two things you really need. Uh, one thing I don't know. Um, I don't know if you need to set like the developer mode in Oculus Quest Pro. That That's the troubleshooting path I went down first. And none of that helped. But the problem is, is I don't know if that also made the, the actual step you need work. My recommendation is if you're getting into this uh, all new like I was within the last week, uh, try the VR tracking app and the space calibration app and see if that works without having to go down the developer... Uh, mode version, but honestly, I'm pretty shocked with how good this all works. The Quest Pro and Index and Vive, uh, three different companies, two different tracking systems. Got my light Lighthouse trackers up over here, and then just the the Quest Pro tracking itself, and it all calibrates pretty well. Uh, I just do the one slow calibration at the start of my session and it tends to work for the entire time my quest pro stays charged yep and that yeah about that 
wireless works. Um, you are gonna probably need Wi-Fi 6. Um, I tried it just through my um, my modem, that, that like the Wi-Fi that comes with the modem. Not good enough. Uh, it could not keep up with the heavy movements. But uh, through Wi-Fi 6, I have a solid 90 frames at all times with no dips. Um, and at most, I end up with about uh, 20 milliseconds of lag. So that's through the, it's not like video lag, that's just a lag through the Wi-Fi. So if I turn very rapidly, I do see the black screen show up at the corners. However, with the way the Quest Pro works is you don't really have to look around as much. The pancake lenses and uh, foveated rendering, wherever you look is the clearest point. So you, you find that you're not looking around as much. You're just actually using your eyes to, to see things. And that's the, bi that's the biggest difference between the Quest Pro and uh, my index. The, the index is so freaking blurry on the outsides, and uh, the god rays are such a pain. Especially with, like, me, since I have had eye surgery, so I'm more susceptible to uh, seeing those god rays. This is entirely different. Uh, clear as day. It's it's a whole new experience. And being able to have face tracking and, like, I need to do it. <laughs> Just making weird faces being silly uh, it it brings a whole different life to this it, it works um, definitely recommend it for people wanting to get into face tracking who uh, I mean it's a big price tag right $900 for a headset in addition to all the stuff like I already had this I've had the rest of this stuff for the last two years so it wasn't as big of an investment but like if you don't have anything, that's a huge jump. So, uh, just to keep that in mind, but if you want crystal clear view, um, and honestly, like, very seamless, very seamless Wi-Fi connection to your headset with face track, it works. It, it's pretty nice. So... Yeah, just wanted to kind of talk about my experiences, the kind of pitfalls that I went through considering this is kind of a new thing with Steam Link coming out about uh, a week ago? A week, I don't know. It was, it was pretty recent though, so there wasn't a whole lot out there on how to set this up properly. But not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs>